Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. A young woman, 22 years old, Masa Amini, uh, died in police custody, Dr. Shabir. Um, she was charged with not wearing appropriate clothing, not wearing modest enough clothing um, by the Iranian government. And Dr. Shabir, this has raised all sorts of questions. You know, there are Iranian, there are women from Iran all over the streets now protesting, uh, taking off their hijabs, cutting their hair um, in protest of what has happened to Masa Amini and, and just anger over the Iranian government um, and the regime. And so, Dr. Shabir, this has raised a question about the state, the Islamic state. And does an Islamic state need to enforce the hijab? Well, to begin with, we can say that uh, it is very clear from the Quran that uh, the Muslim polity uh, would have certain, uh, well, it would be within their jurisdiction to uh, um, en enforce penal laws. So, for, for example, the law against stealing, against murder, and so on. At the same time, uh, the, uh, the Quran does not give any specific mandate in, in, with regards to hijab uh, in terms of a Muslim uh, polity enforcing it. Uh, we can only say that in general, the Muslim polity would have the responsibility to do what the Quran speaks of generally as al-amr bil-ma'ruf wa nahyan al-munkar, commanding what is good and forbidding what is, what is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, when it comes to so many different uh, evils in society, uh, the Muslim government would have to be sagacious in, in picking the battles and seeing, you know, what uh, what can be enforced, should be enforced, uh, as, a, as opposed to some things which uh, you need to just be content with preaching and education uh, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to me that uh, the uh, Muslim woman's clothing uh, has been much misunderstood in, in Islamic law and in our classical law books uh, to the extent that, you know, the covering of the entire woman's body is sometimes uh, being uh, presented as a given. And as if it all has the same ruling of fard or obligatory. Mm -hmm. And so one would see that as a, um, you know, if, if somebody violates any aspect of that, they would see that, you know, it's like the whole thing. It so it almost reminds me of uh, a statement in the book of James in, in the Bible, where it says if you uh, omit one law, it's like you broke the whole thing, something of this nature. Uh, but it's not an all or nothing, because in Islamic law, uh, it is generally recognized, though it somehow doesn't seem to apply here. I mean, people have not applied it here, but I don't see why not. Um, so generally, it is understood that uh, there are gradations of things. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you think of our prayers, there are those aspects of the prayer which are obligatory, those which are wajib, not quite obligatory, but one might say essential. Uh, those which are sunnah, uh, th that means it's a generally recognized practice, either of the Prophet, peace be upon him, or the earliest Muslims. And then among those, there are those which are emphasized and those which are not emphasized. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is non-emphasized sunnah, such that if you omit those, uh, you're not under any penalty. You, you do not actually incur any sin. Um, and, and then there are voluntary aspects. So they're good, nice if you do them, but if you omit them, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to the Muslim woman's uh, head cover, how is it that everything is presented as if it has the same verdict of fard or obligatory? No, in an Islamic state, I think it would be essential for um, the, the government to um, draw distinctions between certain aspects and say, okay, um, we desire for um, uh, people to adhere to this dress code, but if they violate this aspect or that aspect, it's not, uh, you know, something that requires a penalty mm -hmm. um, and so on. They, yeah, they could... because Dr. Shabir, even if something is obligatory, it, there doesn't need to be a law commanding it, you know, even if something is obligatory by, the, by, the, by you know, religion, it doesn't necessarily mean that the government needs to take it into their own hands to enforce it. True. Right? Like, True. for example, prayer. I can't imagine that many Islamic states enforce prayer and say, you know, yes, it's obligatory. I think all Muslims would agree that prayer is obligatory, but nobody's saying, okay, you know, if you don't pray, or even if you don't come to the congregational prayer once a week, that you're going to be charged, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, Muslim governments have, uh, you know, following perhaps uh, purists uh, in this regard, uh, have um, enacted laws and, and, and uh, made sure, for example, that businesses would be closed mm -hmm. at the prayer time, mm -hmm. especially on a Friday. 
Um, and a purist might argue further that uh, you know the person who does not come to join the regular prayers uh, or does not do the regular prayers at all, uh, they could face certain penalties and so on. Uh, even uh, we can extend that to fasting and see that purists would argue, you know, the person who does not fast during the month of Ramadan, though being able-bodied and not being ill or being on a journey, that person should be penalized as well. But all of this is taking Islamic law too far, and it is going beyond what the Prophet, peace be upon him, himself practiced. And, and people might try to pin this on the Prophet, peace be upon him, by saying, you know, if the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would have done that. But mm -hmm. uh, that is a little bit far-fetched. Um, in any case, more to the point about the hijab, in, in time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, it is not so clear that we had uh, the, the present standards about hijab that, that, that we think is so essential. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so clear that this is what was prevalent in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, the, the narratives that go to show that the women were so completely covered, for example, you won't find it in Bukhari. You would find it, for example, in Abu Dawood that says that when such and such a verse of the Quran was revealed, then the women came out of their house, homes with uh, their heads uh, apparently covered with, uh, so, so they appear to be like, you know, they have something like the crows have, hmm. um, this comb on the head. Some, some, the way they, they wore their, their head cover apparently gave that kind of uh, impression to, to people. Uh, but you, it's, it's significant that this is not in, in Bukhari and Muslim, it's in Abu Dawood. In, in Bukhari, the most you would find is that it says that if a woman prays without her head covering, then her prayer is not accepted. Mm -hmm. But that's only about prayer, it's mm -hmm. not about uh, the generality of the situation. And uh, you know, in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, there were uh, slaves, uh, as, as there were in the time of Jesus, on whom be peace. And uh, the, the rules for slaves are acknowledged to be very different from the, the rules for free citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, clothing, uh, the, it, it, there is a hadith which seems to indicate that uh, slave women uh, only had to cover from, from the waist uh, down to the knees, mm. uh, and which is basically what is prescribed for men as well. And so if we try to imagine that situation, um, it's, it's, it's hard for us today because being accustomed to the rules of hijab as we commonly know it. But when we look at that, we realize that uh, you know, a lot has developed over time, for, for better or for worse. And where it works and people are fine with living by these standards, so one cannot doubt that this, this is very decent. Uh, uh, you know, to wear the Muslim woman's hijab as it is commonly worn in, in many parts of the Muslim world. Uh, but to now enforce that and, and say that this was as it was in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that requires more evidence and proof. Mm -hmm. and, and that evidence and proof is lacking. So I think we need to relax a little bit about that when it comes to public uh, enforcement. And, and Dr. And, Shabir, if you think about a, you know, an Islamic country where m the majority of people are Muslim, there's going to be a certain culture in that society of how to dress, right? Yes. So you don't necessarily need a law to tell you how to dress. People just know, like, for example, you go to Egypt, right? There, there's no law necessarily telling you, okay, you got to wear hijab, but the majority of people do wear it, right? Yes, yes. And, and you can count on education and preaching. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're running the state, you have state television, you have state media. Uh, you, you can, through all of these media outlets, uh, you can uh, educate people and guide them, teach them about the uh, Quran and, and the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, since these teachings are so beautiful and uh, self-explanatory and, uh, and wise, uh, people will naturally gravitate towards them and you don't need to enforce uh, the laws that you derive from them. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you have too many laws, people rebel against those laws. True. True. And it becomes difficult to enforce as well. And mm -hmm. then if you go enforcing everything, then you become a police state, which mm -hmm. is also not very desirable a, a place to, to live under. Uh, so a, a balance has to be struck. In almost every country in the world, you will have some line that, that cannot be crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, people will be penalized for crossing that line. Mm -hmm. So there are indecency laws against, uh, you know, the laws against indecency. So where the law is going to be drawn in the Muslim society may be slightly different, but it shouldn't be so radically different that, so as to make everyone squirm and uh, 
and, and make Islam look like something inapplicable in our modern world, something so out of place. Thank you for that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today.